Good evening everyone and welcome to an Oz Cyclone Chasers Cyclone video update tonight on Good Friday the 18th of April 2014. We hope you are starting your long weekend well and we hope you have a great Easter break coming up. But tonight we do have some interesting things to talk about, particularly in terms of the potential for a cyclone to form in the Timor Sea or the Arafura Sea. We also see another system developing in the central Indian Ocean and it's touch and go as to whether that one will develop uh, in our area but look that one will not affect Australia. So if we take a look at today's satellite animation we can see that there's a little bit of instability out here in the southeast Indian Ocean. Not much coming of that particular thunderstorm cluster. There is one way out here to the west. You, can, you can't really see it too well here because we're looking too far to the east but it's right on the edge of the Australian area of responsibility. That is somewhat developing over the next two to three days and it is still expected to form into a very, very weak tropical cyclone. However, there is a little bit of mixed guidance on that. Look, whatever happens out of that system, it's not going to affect mainland Western Australia. It's not going to come near mainland Western Australia and it's expected to remain out there. But what it might do is it might create a bit of interest as to whether we call it Tropical Cyclone Jack or whether the Frenchies to the west of us call it, uh, their, call it whatever name they're up to. Uh, so if it develops east of 90 degrees east, it becomes an Aussie system, and we have to call him Jack. Uh, if, it, if it develops west of 90 degrees east, the uh, La Reunion will mention it, uh, will name it, and they are a French organisation or run by the French Met Office. Now, interestingly, as we head further to the east, though, is what's happening out here along the northeastern parts of the Northern Territory. We're seeing an enhanced area of convergence in the Gulf Country, pushing westwards towards the Arafura Sea. And we're seeing that enhanced area of convergence all the way through the Torres Strait and into the Solomon Islands or the Solomon Sea out here. So there's a fairly decent linkage there in that convergence zone. While it's probably not not a uh, monsoon trough as such, not a true reflection of a monsoon trough. It is certainly an enhanced line of convergence uh, to, the, uh, to the northern or the far northern parts of Australia. If we look at the gradient level wind analysis, we can see that even though there's convergence here right across the northern parts of Australia, uh, there's no real designated monsoon trough there. You can see that all the winds here are coming in from the southeast all the way through to the equator and they're then turning southwesterlies. So there's no real sign of a monsoon as such, but it is a certainly a equatorial convergence zone up here to the Northern Territory linking up into the Torres Strait and then linking up in towards the Solomon Islands. As we head further to the west on that map, you can see here the low pressure system that I'm talking about. This is the 90 degree east line that it's lying right on top of. And if it develops just east of that line or on that line, it'll be an Australian cyclone and we'll call him Jack. If it develops to the west of that, uh, it'll be a French cyclone. And I'm not sure what the hell they're going to call it, but it'll be interesting regardless. So I guess that's the only interesting point of that particular system because it won't be impacting Australia. Now the area to watch that's a little bit more of interest in Australia is this little tiny trough system forming just in here in the Arafura Sea. And you, if you blink a little bit, you, you'll miss it. So you really need to look closely. It's just a little tiny trough feature developing right in that spot right there. Now that little tiny dip or trough is expected to eventually form into a low pressure system. Now, whether it does that and where it does that, sorry, not whether, it's, it is expected to do that, but where it does that, is going to be quite key in terms of its potential for development further as we head towards the one to two week range. You can see here on the UK Met model, they developed that weak little trough. Remember the trough at the moment, remembering that I just showed you lies just in that area there. Now they form that little weak trough in about 42 hours time in into a tropical low. And then they drift that low to the west very, very slowly. It's almost quasi-stationary there for about two or three days. And then it starts drifting in a south-southwest direction and starts to intensify a little into a more into a more noticeable or recognisable low pressure centre. Now, 
the extended UK Met forecast does have the system developing into a borderline tropical cyclone as it pushes in this southwesterly direction out here in the Timor Sea. So folks, it is certainly something to watch because the UK Met model is the number two model in terms of accuracy in the world when it comes to these sorts of things. So we do need to pay attention to it. And I'll show you now the GFS model, which is suggesting something very similar. The GFS2 develops a tropical low out here in about two to three days time, a little bit further to the east than where the UK Met have it. And you can see here by, by the colouring, it does intensify it into a category one tropical cyclone as it pushes it in a south southwest to southwest direction, sorry, southwest to west southwest direction. I've got to get my bearings right there. Um, and pushes it right in towards the North Kimberley coastline. So folks, I guess if it gets pretty close here to the Tiwis, we could actually see an enhanced period of weather for the northwestern top end, and that would include the more populated region of Darwin. Um, so that is certainly certainly a track that would, we would need to watch. Obviously, the UK Met having the system another 200 kilometres or so further to the west would limit the potential effects on Darwin itself and the more populated northwest top end coastline. Looking at the Canadian CMC track, once again, two to three days' time is the period to watch. They've got it developing a little bit further to the northeast of the GFS and a little bit to the east of the UK Met. And we can see here that it tracks quite close to the Tiwi Islands on the, on the CMC and then it tracks in a west to west southwest direction and remaining a fairly moderate to strong low rather than a tropical cyclone on the Canadian. If we track it using the experimental FIM-8 model, we see that the system uh, pushes in here from the northwest, uh, sorry, from the north towards the west-southwest here and approaches the North Kimberley coastline as a weak tropical cyclone on the uh, on the FIM-8 model. But we can also see this other one that I mentioned that could form just around the 90 degree east mark in WA and we see that even by day 5 it's still located well away from Australia and already weakening quite dramatically by day 5 as it comes under the influence of some dry air from this high pressure system down south and some vertical wind shear as well. The European, as has been very typical of the European this season, is very, very slow in deepening anything uh, of significance here. It continues the system tracking well out here to the north of the Northern Territory, out towards East Timor. And you see that the system does not intensify at all on the European over the next five days. Once again, folks, the European is causing us a little bit of concern due to its lack of initialization of these systems it's been doing this now for all seasons so we're quite getting quite a little bit concerned about the euros at least perceived accuracy this season in australia this is normally our go-to model and we are damn sure that it's the bureau of meteorology's go-to model and it really has been off kilter this summer and there has been some manipulation of the of the european model and because of that manipulation it has resulted in some discrepancy in its accuracy here for the, for the southern hemisphere all we can say, folks, is that the Euro is picking up something, uh, but it's not doing anything much with it except for drifting it to the west. Now, overall this season, the Euro has not been very good with tropical cyclones in the Australian area. So, folks, at this stage, overall, we're expecting the system to probably not follow the Euro. We're expecting the system to track in a west-southwesterly direction, somewhere between Timor and the Northern Territory, and gradually develop. Although we're not saying it'll develop into a cyclone just yet, we're saying it'll gradually deepen a little bit uh, over the next five days. After that, well, we'll have to wait un until models align a little better. But at this stage, the European model is an outlier, suggesting that it's going to be that far to the north and that underdeveloped. So do take this one, even though, as I say, it is still regarded as the world's number one model. Its accuracy this season, not very good at all for Australia. So please do take this particular model guidance with a grain of salt. We do expect something a little bit more significant than what the Euro is showing us. But you can see here the Euro also suggesting this, uh, this tropical cyclone, tropical low out here by day 5 has weakened out completely as well. 
Speaking of outliers, and we've already shown you the Euro as an outlier. This is the Navgem model. It's also an outlier. Look, this one isn't particularly accurate, folks, but it is suggesting a recurve back towards the southeast, towards the northeastern top end. Now, if that happens, we're going to see a late bout of wet season rainfall here across the northern top end, anywhere from east of Darwin all the way through to the northeastern parts of the Territory and eventually into the Gulf Country of, of Queensland and NT. But as I say, this is an outlier, so do take this one with a grain of salt. Also, the Navgem is picking up that tropical lower cyclone out here to the west. So if the Navgem's picking it up, then you, you know there's an issue here. And the fact that the Navgem's picking up something up here, given its low resolution, um, is, is a fairly good indicator that something's going to form out here. Further to the east, a lot of the global models are also picking up a weak disturbance developing between Vanuatu, the Solomons, and pushing slowly westwards towards the Solomon Islands. At this stage, none of the computer models are, are developing this significantly except for the GFS, and we've already been telling you how all season how the GFS is, is quite intent on developing convective thunderstorms in the tropics and just making them into cyclones. So we're not too worried until some of the other global models start picking this up. But this is the UK Met, and it's suggesting a very weak disturbance pushing to the west here and lying around the Solomon Islands on day five. And as I said, here's the GFS. The GFS actually forms this quite rapidly after day five, so we're only going to show you out to day five. But after day five, it actually forms this into a cyclone pretty rapidly, pushes it south, and then bang, southeast. So look, folks, at this stage, it's unlikely to affect Queensland, even if it does form. So even if it does get itself miraculously going out here into a cyclone, it's very unlikely to approach the Queensland coast. By now, most of Queensland, most of the eastern, southern, and central Coral Sea, especially, are now under the influence of upper level westerlies and so that's pretty well going to stay the case until next next summer so next cyclone season so folks i wouldn't be too concerned about this solomon island system obviously the big issue is the solomons we don't need another weak disturbance in that area they're already copping rain now uh, following on from their very very heavy rain from a few weeks ago from ex uh, tropical cyclone ita which by the way can i just add is causing havoc around new zealand so ita really just doesn't want to die um, so we've got a situation here where even a weak disturbance in the Solomons is cause for concern for the Solomon Island residents because they have had so much rain in the last few weeks. So, uh, fo folks, hopefully that weak disturbance will not just sit in the Solomons. It'll just continue pushing west and then die um, rather than uh, sitting out here right over the top of the islands. Again, that's the last thing they need. The bomb aren't too concerned about the Northern Territory system, so at this stage, over the next three days, the Bureau have very low chances. In fact, they don't even talk about the, the little weak trough in the area, so obviously the Bureau are going more with the European uh, side of things where they don't expect this thing to develop, and that's why they're not saying anything about it. As for WA, well, they're talking about that one way out to the west I mentioned. They're saying that it's going to develop uh, west of 90 degrees east, and so therefore they won't have the uh, job of actually naming him Jack. So that'll happen, uh, the, the Frenchies will name him something there. That's what the beer are expecting anyway. And it will eventually come back into our area though, and so it is likely to become another cyclone for Australia, in, in inverted commas, despite the fact that it's very unlikely to actually threaten Australia. So, face before we uh, finish talking about this little low that's developing or going to develop up here in the northern parts of uh, or north of the Northern Territory, I just want us to have a look at some of the environmental conditions. So, this is the European model at four days' time. So, this is by Tuesday. Uh, they're expecting that low out here to the northeast of East Timor. And if we look at the conditions in and around the Arafura Sea, now we can see that overall the wind shear condition are ideal. So there's really nothing to stop the system from it uh, from it possibly getting going, if it can uh, if it can already be a tropical low and not be over land at the time. There's nothing there in the wind shear that can stop it. If we look at the amount of moisture in the atmosphere, there is a lot of dry air out here to the north of the North Kimberley and all the way through to the Southeast Indian Ocean, but over the Timor Sea and Arafura Sea, we're seeing moist conditions, and so really there's no evidence of why the Euro is holding this back in terms of its development. So sometimes we just have to look through the model a little bit. So even though the model might be suggesting something at the surface, we look through and, and 
and analyze what the hell is holding it back and at the moment we can't really see much in in terms of uh, any real th issues holding this particular low back if it can form out here um, that the euro is suggesting. So if we look at the GFS in stark contrast uh, and we look at the GFS at, at day four, we can see the GFS develops a much stronger system much closer to the Northern Territory coast. Now remember the GFS often does this so don't pay too much attention to the intensity of 40 to 50 knots of winds here. Um, very unlikely to happen. But what we do need to look at is the surrounding environmental conditions. And once again, if we look at humidity values, near near the system itself are pretty good, but there is a lot of dry air once again around the North Kimberley to the Southeast Indian Ocean or Southwest Timor Sea. Uh, so overall, it probably borderline to okay in terms of relative humidity levels. Now, relative humidity, we need these blue values, and we're talking about the humidity not at the surface because it's bloody humid at the surface, but we need that humidity to, to uh, that, that moisture to be located through the mid levels of the atmosphere. So we're talking more at the three kilometers to six kilometers high level rather than the uh, rather than the surface. And also, if we look at the other thing with this one is wind shear if we see that the system lies in moderate wind shear according to the GFS so a little bit less favorable in the GFS and yet the GFS intensifies it rapidly which tends to suggest that the GFS is probably having a bit of a laugh at the moment uh, and it's unlikely to develop that quickly. So somewhere between where the Euro is suggesting and where the GFS is suggesting is probably where reality will lie uh, and as we should be seeing a slowly developing or slowly deepening uh, tropical low by day four out here in the Timor Sea. So that's early next week and we'll have an update on Tuesday night uh, for that one for a little bit more detail in that one on that one. If we look at the MJO, currently it's located in the West Pacific, but it's very weak. It's expected to completely die over the next couple of days, so there will be no more MJO for the Australian area this season. So really, folks, whatever's happening in the Northern Territory is likely to be the last hurrah of the Australian tropical cyclone season. Oh, and don't forget about that little Frenchy one over there in around 90 degree east. So that could be uh, also one of the last hurrahs. But the Northern Territory system could be the last one for the real Australian region. And the UK Met continues to loiter the MJO at a very, very weak level over the next week around the West Pacific. And that's why the UK Met is pr picking up that very weak disturbance around the Solomon Islands. Um, but once again, remembering that conditions around Queensland are not going to be conducive for that to push west towards the state. At least that's what all the models are showing us at the moment. All right, so let's have a look at tomorrow's rainfall for your long weekend. We've got some isolated showers possibly developing around the Herbert Lower Burdekin uh, hinterland area and also the north tropical coast and tablelands, particularly the southern parts of that region. Uh, just a little bit of a surface disturbance there creating some very weak and isolated showers. Uh, over the northern parts of the North Peninsula here, the, the Torres Strait Islands going to be active, going to be going to be a rainy weekend for you. And we're going to see a lot of that rain start to ease. Now, if we look at today's rainfall, you've got a lot of that rain hitting the coast in the Northern Territory. Tomorrow, a lot of it starts to miss the coast. We still have some remaining and lingering showers and thunderstorms in this area. Overall, very a small chance of some uh, isolated shower and storm activity in the far northern Kibberley as well tomorrow but overall pretty dry for WA. As we head to Sunday for your long weekend, your Easter Sunday, isolated showers and storms along the northeastern Arnhem Land district, um, possibly extending inland a little bit with some moisture air pushing inland as well. Uh, over the northwest top end, just the outside chance of a shower or storm for Darwin as well on your Easter Sunday, but as I say, outside chance is the, is the outside is the operative word. A lot of rainfall developing up here or increasing up here with regards to that trough system I showed you and the possible development of a low by Sunday, more likely into Monday. We can see here, Monday, we, we start to see a real centralization of that rain. It's just off your charts here, but there's a centralization of that rain up to the north of the Northern Territory. We still see a fairly moist northeast flow here onto the northeastern parts of the Territory, so we're still gonna see some pretty good shower and storm activity um, developing on the northeast coast of the Territory uh, in response to that and we're still continuing to see showers throughout the Torres Straits and into the North Peninsula as well some more, more isolated stuff we see a bit of a return to some isolated showers along the North Tropical Coast and Tablelands and the Herbert Lower Burdekin on Monday on an onshore stream 
and then on Tuesday we'll actually see uh, that that activity along the tropical coast increase a little and extend a little bit further to the hinterland area. We might even see some isolated showers over northern inland Queensland as well on the Tuesday. And once again, we're starting to see a centralisation of that rainfall here as that low pressure system develops north of Darwin and pushes in a westerly or west southwesterly direction. And in response to that, you're going to see a much moister flow along the coastline as well. So you've now got um, a nice moist northeasterly flow hitting the Northern Territory. So you could just see some quasi wet season rain, some quasi wet season conditions here as we head to mid next week across parts of the far northern parts of the Northern Territory. Now if we have a look at the total forecast rain for the next four days you can see here a lot of rain just to the north of Australia and then the, the next four days after that the 22nd to the 25th to Anzac Day we see that northeasterly flow is really bringing in some rainfall here onto the Western Gulf. We also see an increase in rainfall out here into the uh, Herbert Lyberdican and North Tropical Coast and Tablelands as well. No luck for the farmers, unfortunately, and the graziers inland. That should be the end of your wet season. Um, uh, and we actually see the development or the increase in rainfall here associated with the developing tropical low between uh, the Northern Territory and East Timor. So, folks, very interesting. Not the next four days, but the four days after that are going to be quite interesting if you live in the Northern Territory and possibly even the North Kimberley because things might start happening up there for you. As I say, expect it to be the last hurrah of our wet season, of our, at least, sorry, our cyclone season. Thanks for watching tonight, and we'll have another video update for you on Tuesday night. Now, if that low pressure system to the north of the Northern Territory decides to get itself going uh, earlier than that, then we we'll, might, might have to update you earlier than that. But at this stage, Tuesday night's our next one. Thanks for watching. Have a great Easter. Good night.